because there's a lot to talk about. All right, so let's go into let's let I'm gonna let this beautiful young black queen break down what happened. According to a statement put out by Big T yesterday on True Social, he had got popped at at his pep rally out there in Pennsylvania and got grazed in the ear a little bit. Now, as of right now, I have not received any official reports from doctors or anything to that nature. But if any information changes or anything like that comes out, I will be sure to come back and let y'all know the updates on that. Now, what I did see is a video of Secret Service trying to get Big T off the stage safely after the incident happened. And Big T was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. And then that's when he stopped to take this picture. And then as they got further down the stairs, I guess he realized his shoes was missing. And so they had to stop to get his shoes. Now, the suspected gunman is 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Cooks. As of right now, there are no further details with regards to his motivation, why he did this, how he was even able to carry this out, because at Trump rallies, it is known that there is intense security. You are screened before you get in. Then you also go to metal detectors and stuff like that. But what we do know is that the gunman was actually outside of the pep rally on top of a building. As of right now, Big T doing just fine. He didn't talk to his kids. He didn't talk to some representatives. He talked to Steve Scalise. You know, Scalise know a little something about getting popped out at an event too. So they had a conversation. They got text messages saying he cool, he straight. Big T has at this point made his way from Pennsylvania to New Jersey. He said that he finna continue his little campaign trail because the election is only four months away. Now, according to the Wall Street Journal, BDB and Big T have had a conversation. BDB is Biden, just in case y'all like who the fuck BDB is. That's her short for Biden. Conversation at this point, and BDB is on his way back from Delaware to Washington to handle his business. Now, it has been some people out here trying to be messy and blame what happened to Big T on BDB and his supporters and the way they've been talking and the way they've been getting down in the campaign. Um, but even Big T was like, we don't really know what happened and why that fool was out here acting crazy like that, why he did what he did. So we're not even going to move like that. And I advise us to agree with that just that part as of right now all right so y'all just heard everything i just wanted to give her an opportunity to give y'all the facts before we start clowning because i'm i'm ain't nothing serious about this motherfucking shit at all i'm sorry first of all there's so much video this is how y'all trying to pull off a setup with 20 million cameras around nigga there's video of the staffers positioning the camera people before the shot happened and if y'all watch anything as far as like politics or if you into like secret service shit i go down rabbit holes on shit sometimes Secret Service niggas ain't gonna not have, they're not gonna fight with this nigga while he trying to stand up. Bro, they'd have snatched his ass and had him in the car in less than a minute, bro. They, if you watch the video clip, it's four people fighting with Donald Trump like he's a wrestler from, from WWF. No, no, and he gotta have his hand up. This is malarkey. Straight bull schnackle, bro. I, 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 this is the corniest shit i've never seen in my life this is some movie tv show shit brought into real life y'all position some random dude to take a shot at trump and then now all of a sudden he's unalive come on come on man that's crazy this is crazy uh gentlemen i mean is, is y'all believing so, this or not so wait you you thinking is a is a like is a is a it's fake yeah this is all fake to make him look to make him look like you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I'm fighting for the people. You see, they trying to take me down. You see the position. He, he, man, they spinning the shit out of this right now, bro. I, I don't even believe in, like, uh, uh, what is it called? The conspiracy theories? Yeah, I don't believe conspiracy theories, bro. Like, why, why, like, why is it, why would somebody, why would they fake that? That don't make sense. What, what do he gain from it? He firing up his base. It doesn't, he, like, this is perfect for them. All they needed to do was get him shot at and everybody go see, they trying to take Trump out. He must be the real leader. He's the real da, 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 da. Yo, go on Twitter, go up under Elon's post about this and see how they going crazy. The whites are going crazy over this. Don't, what's but, you shaking we your head but I feel like Donald Trump don't need to get shot to, for the whites to go crazy. They've been going crazy over him forever. Like he don't need to get shot. Yeah. Nah, yo, cause niggas been kind of like that. Niggas been kind of laming out over him, yo, cause he been he been acting a little stupid. This is the this is reaffirming niggas. Like it's been a close race this whole time, man. See, I don't know too much about. I I don't know, but I just don't think because I don't believe in conspiracy theories. Like I don't see them, and I'm reading up on a guy. I guess is is a young guy. He got killed. He got shot. They they killed him. Yeah, they killed mm -hmm. him. It seemed like he was a. Uh, it said he was a Republican. Mm hmm. So he. 
he wasn't a, um, a, a, a Democrat. He was registered as a Republican. I'm not saying, bro, you got to hire somebody in your own squad to go do the dumb thing. You can't go get no Democrat to go take no shot at Trump. We're not going to do that. You're going to get another one of your, you're going to get one of your little dumb, little young niggas that's out here with his, with his mind all aft up. And send him out there to go take it. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. He probably got money sent to his mama. So who? So who's responsible for the setup? You saying like it's Trump's camp? They responsible yeah, for it? Yeah, Big Big T got his whole squad together. Like, yo, we need to take this over the top. So why the would Secret he... Service was in on it too? Yeah. <laughs> no. that, don't, that don't even make sense. Niggas, what all the ca- you know how hard it would be to pull off some shit like that without motherfuckers knowing that it's like that's what I was uh, all set up. Like it's how, it would be how, incredible. How how was, how was that hard? Bro, Donald Trump do is it? already in enough trouble. You don't think like that makes no sense for him. He already got all these, you know, charges, this and that third. So technically they've been trying to take him down this whole time. It's and crazy. I honestly believe motherfuckers is tired of Biden. Motherfuckers is tired of Biden already, though. So, like, people are already... He's already in a good position to potentially win his second presidency because Biden old as shit. Ain't no other candidates out there besides Trump, him. Trump and, old as shit. <laughs> Trump old as shit, but the Trump is still able to function. You feel me? So I, I, I just think it's funny that everybody was in the comments talking about, hey, this is fake. I know it's fake. This that, and third niggas can't even figure out how to overcome their own personal situations <laughs> in their life. But they can sit on the internet and tell everybody that this shit is a motherfucking hoax and is fake. And then you got content creators reenacting if they was the ones that was shooting at Trump. Like, yo, are <laughs> niggas dumb? Are y'all niggas dumb? What would what possess the- you to make content? You aiming a gun, like <laughs> pretending to shoot and and try to kill Trump. Like, I don't. I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think it's fake. I don't know. I, I think it's real. But again, I don't in, think... in my mind, it's like, bro, all this stuff that Trump got going on, the last thing he needs to do is try to set up some type of conspiracy to shoot himself for them to find out. One. And two, I don't even understand how that man could even, even still run for president. Like, the nigga's a convicted felon, right, at this point. The guy is showing, if, he, if he's not, I'm sorry, I might sound ignorant. But if this man ain't the American dream, I don't know what the hell is. He's showing you that you can do anything you put your mind to. <laughs> like, who the hell would have thought that in 2024 we would have a convicted felon running for president? This is he, this man is crazy. Like, we need to get niggas like this out of the way. And I think that's probably what the young man was thinking. Like, because we don't need somebody like this in leadership, bro. That he's really I understand one thing about going against the odds or defying all the odds. I get that. But I don't like what this represents for our country this shows that bro i can do i can be a fucked up person and still run my country it's like no i don't think that's the message that i want to push to my my kids i don't know right no ain't ain't nothing to not no nigga you completely right I, and and beyond that I, I to me the thing that disgusts me the most is that he's uneducated he doesn't know what he's doing he has no decorum and yo he has no real love for for the american culture and how we should be moving forward he's really just a money hungry old white dude man and it's it's insane how much he's getting away with so many different things and and a lot of this stuff and it's crazy that watching his presidency really shows us how much of the things that we've hold dear a ceremonial meaning that there's no law to hold certain things in place and that you really really can do what you want to do once you get in that office if you decide to push the envelope mm. and trump pushed the envelope like a mug and that's what's really got a lot of people woken up i think i think why people like him is he's a representation of who you are when you're by yourself when you look in the mirror and what i mean by that is like we say he's money hungry uh, most of america's uh, most most of americans are money hungry including us right we we might not be as money hungry as this the next man but most of us are money hungry right so mm-hmm. when you have somebody like trump that's in office and and it can give you stimulus checks in and i don't know tax cuts and sh- shit like that you feel what i'm saying of course people want to want him to be in, in office because it benefits them right like bro he's I, Man, it's, it's just ridiculous, bro. But ain't that the whole point, though? Don't you want somebody in office that's going to benefit you and represent you in Facts. the things that you like to do? Yeah. I mean, I feel like the, the, the um, what's, what's it called? The economy was was a, a little more thriving with, with him in office. And I'm not even a Trump supporter. 
I'm just saying, I just feel like, you know, niggas wasn't as as struggling with with this motherfucker in office. But it also, but, I, but Nick, I'm not going to lie to you, though. But it also was the pandemic as well, right? Let's look at it. Again, I'm not the yes. most political. I don't know. But during the pandemic, a lot of people was getting money, right? It it was it was a uh, a national di this disaster going on. I, mean, I don't I don't know the right words. Don't forget right. forgive me, but whatever. Like yeah. it was a it was a pandemic, so of course it was funds that could be allocated to to emergency situations. You get what I'm saying? So like that that makes sense. Now let's see if can he do the same thing when it's not a pandemic. Right, if that makes you, know what I'm trying to ask, like, cause during the pandemic, awesome. everybody had money, like it was mm -hmm. unemployment out the roof, right? It was, it was a lot going on. Now coming out yeah, the yeah, pandemic, yeah, yeah. I, I always was taught this, and I said this before, I said this a hundred times. You can't compare, you can't compare science projects if, all, if if one variable is different. All the variables got to be the same. So we can't keep comparing Biden's ter um term to Trump's term because we was coming, we was out of the pandemic. Nobody was getting money. The uh, The whole world was upside down, if, if you think about it, right? Niggas wasn't trying to go back to work. A lot of jobs were trying to get pay people to go back on site. People ain't want to go back on site. The the um, the um unemployment was, was dried up. And during the pandemic, I know mad niggas that was moving from state to state to get unemployment from five different places. Like, bro, we can't ignore that. So we can't just say one is better. Like, man, all these niggas corrupt. What happened to the Green Party? Shit. Hold on. So what? November is the election, right? Like, that's when you all four months from now yes sir yeah so that means that biden went back into office in 2020 which was still pandemic -y, right and that that's when he won he won in 2020. yeah it was like it was like the end of 2020. yeah, yeah. 2021, 2024. 2021 is yeah. when 2022 is really when the pandemic was over i think 2022. right so so biden got an office that january right. of 21 technically because you get elected in November, right. but then you take office then, over. I think like January nineteenth, right. something like that. So, right, right, I mean, right. it was still, it was still a little still pandemic time. It was still pandemic time. Yeah, that's a so. fact. But you're still talking about the worst part of the pandemic. So, like all of the major decisions on how we would re respond to it happen under Trump. You know what I mean? So when Biden takes office, he's just dealing with the repercussions of it. Like he's just dealing with the, with the, you know, the blowback and the, and the economy. And then look, Trump spends a ton of money to keep everybody happy. And then what happens? Biden has to pay that money back. We dealing with a deficit. You cause inflation like crazy. People are not paying rent. Do you think that's going to make it easy for Biden to come and fix everything? No, nah, bro. It took him four years to get things back to where they at. And we're still, you know, we're still dealing with the, the financial repercussions of 2020. That's the reason why inflation is so high. That's why you, the cost of buying a car, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? All of that, yo, the interest rate is in fucking sane right now because this shit was crazy before. You know, it's funny. You know? I wish I, I wish I, I need to educate myself more about this because I will see the effect on things, but I don't really understand where it's coming from. For example, I remember it was a time where you could buy a used car for like 10, like a good used car for like $10,000. $10,000. Like a good one. I, right. I remember looking for a car like two years ago and I'm like, yo, I can't, $10,000 ain't gonna get you nothing. Like they want 20 for a used car, like a used Shit. car. <laughs> I seen 40, 50 for a used car that ain't, that, I, I'm talking about when you talking about a decent, mid-sized car or, or a van or a truck or something like that you spending you spending on that shit but i mean at the end of the day all right it's, it's just as simple somebody got to get paid somewhere so if you stop people from getting paid for a year let, let's, let's just talk about 2020 when you freeze rent where people don't have to pay rent when people are getting paid on jobs and they not working or they working remotely Yo, people want to get their money back. So, of course, what's going to happen after the, the rent gets unfreezed and you can't pay your rent? What you think? I, if I own a house, I got to get my money back. I'm going to mm. kick this person out of this fucking house. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to raise my rent. And because I got to fix the house up after putting that person out. So I got to put I got to lose money, kick somebody out, spend more money to make it habitable for the next person. So what you think I'm going to do? I'm going to raise the rent. Mm. That's what that's pretty much what the entire world did. It's like, all right, we came out of a bad situation where people had to spend tons of money and they froze the interest rates, meaning that during the time of the pandemic, you couldn't raise interest rates. So they couldn't try to recoup during the time of the pandemic. So all of these businesses were really like prepping, like, all right, as soon as they unfreeze the interest rates, as soon as they, you know, stop forcing us to do things, sir, we're going to fucking raise the interest rates. We're going to raise our prices for everything. And 
you know what I'm saying? We're going to get our fucking money back. That's the reason why we're in a situation now that corporations are responding to the to the massive losses from two or three years, 20 between 20 and 22. What are the benefits that, of of Trump being president? The benefits of Trump being president are tax breaks, huge corporation tax breaks. Uh, this nigga not giving a fuck about other countries, which is kind of good and kind of bad. So from one side of the coin, us saying fuck other countries means that we focus most of our money and our energy on ourselves, which is cool, but it's not good from a global perspective because we have inserted ourselves into so many different global matters. When we remove ourselves from it, it destabilizes you know what I'm saying? International trade. It just destabilizes countries from being able to, to, to create and connect. It destabilizes things that have been checked. So sometimes we're in a country to keep another country from acting like an asshole. So that way we could, you know, utilize them for resources or just be a nice guy. When we remove ourselves from all of that, it puts a lot of our assets in jeopardy. So let's just say J Hill uh, Network buys a big ass studio in africa we we going to uganda and we got the african studio in uganda two hundred thousand miles of some shit you dump a half a billion dollars into it because america's got a base there we import our own people we know we gonna get money you know it's good what if america pulls out of uganda the base it's like it, it was two hundred thousand niggas in the country guarding your shit then all of a sudden one day they go all right bro we out good luck <laughs> And there's there's a weak government there. You got a half a billion dollars invested, and overnight somebody could come in and take your shit. That's the same thing. Think about Exxon. Think about BP. They have interests all over the world, and these are the biggest, you know what I'm saying, money generators in our country. They have big billion dollar interests all over the world, and America has to protect those interests. In addition to keeping motherfuckers from nuclear, creating nuclear shit to come kill us. That's another thing we got to do. Keep these motherfuckers as fanatics and crazy motherfuckers from developing bombs and pushing the buttons. So that's the reason why we have to be involved in the rest of the world. And, 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 Outside of that, go ahead. And I'm asking, so Trump does that, or Biden does that, or both? That's something that we need to do. When Trump comes in office, Trump pretty much says, fuck niggas. It's all about America. So if you're not giving us no money, fuck you. And it's cool on the front end because it's, we start pulling back on how much we spend in other countries. And we take that money and he does whatever the fuck he does with it, which is make, make magically make it disappear. And that's cool in the front end, but it makes it a problem on the back end. So like when Russia decides they're, they they want to take over wherever the fuck they fighting at now, that's a result of Trump going, I don't give a fuck, do what you want to do. So now this puts a whole nother country at, at odds. So now they're fighting with a fucking huge ass country and it's people are getting millions of people are being killed. That's the price we pay for not being involved. Like we normally are. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. All right, this shit is boring. No, I mean, on. I'm learning. I'm, my bad. I'm learning because I'm I'm genuinely curious because now I'm like, what's yeah. the benefits of Biden? Like, I don't, I have, I have no idea. So the, dude, I will tell you the perfect reason Biden, first of all, has been in politics for over 50 years. So by having relationships abroad and in the, in, in this country, he's able to get people from both sides of the aisle to work together which is very hard he can get republicans and he can get democrats to work together on policies that help the country move forward trump when he comes in office is more like yo i don't give a fuck who you are if you ain't rocking with me fuck with you and he caused gridlock meaning that legislation wasn't able to be passed so like if we was trying to get new medicare if we are trying to get new highways built if we're trying to put money to space programs he ain't trying to put no money into it unless he's getting a kickback biden is all about yo we're trying to prepare for the future same thing as biden's overseas he understands what's going on overseas shout out to she who succeeds shout out to you uh you know him being overseas he's got relationships overseas to keep things cool plus he has a very thorough understanding of geopolitics so of course he can walk into situations and he can be a politician meaning that he can deal with problems and situations that arise he's good with dealing with tr dealing with trade he's good with keeping china from going crazy keeping the russians from going crazy and you know what i'm saying also keeping things kind of on an even keel how do you know the difference like how do you, how, because how do you get watched, educated with this shit? You just watch. Okay, so I watch CNN. I watch Fox sometimes. 
when it's not fucking annoying. Uh, I definitely watch a lot of uh, John Stewart. If you want some funny shit, but also get educated at the same time, watch John Stewart, bro. Like he he dumps out shit loads of information, but he also you know what I'm saying makes it funny. I also like watch uh, Bill Maher. I also watch a lot of YouTube videos. So like when I start hearing about certain conflicts, I'll literally just go and do research, watching YouTube videos about different stuff, bro. Like you just have to be involved. Plus I'm a huge politics fan and I like political dramas. So like, I'm kind of into that shit. That's bro. That's impressive. Cause I'm like, bro, you be working and you be watching all this and you be watching TV too. And you be watching movies and shit. Damn. Yeah. I'm and consuming, yo, you consuming information all day. So uh, what'd you say? Uh, I'm glad Mr. B is back. Good morning, y'all. Shout out to you, uh, trapping in future. Shout out to you, my G. Uh, thanks to everybody. Yo, jump in the chat, drop a uh, drop a comment in the chat. Tell us what you want us to talk about, and uh, you know we'll get it there. I didn't I didn't want to make this boring, bro. I was just you know answering questions. Nah, I mean, boring at all. Yeah, I'm about to say you I'm know? interested. I'm like shit. Did you know this shit, man? I, I oh, kind of feel bad. I feel like as an adult, these well, are things you should know. Yo, when and, and here's another thing. When you're investing money, especially when you're like stocks and stuff like that, you need to be mindful of why your stock is going down or why your stock is going up. So like a lot of times when you're investing in things like gold, oil, shit like that, by being like you want to know why your shit go down 20 points in a day and you lost a thousand dollars so then you gotta fucking immediately like that's what really i mean to be honest with you that's what happens to me like so like when i lose a lot of money i'm like what the fuck is going on i, I i'm now i'm looking on the news what's going on oh shit this just happened oh that just happened or such and such is fighting uh plus in addition to as you watch movies i, I be starting to un, trying to be wondering like how much of this shit is real versus fake so like if, if they're talking about uh you know foreign interest versus domestic interest like i need to understand what that's about you know what i mean like i need to understand how the world works especially because i'm a part of it um but yeah just a lot of that shit is just natural uh inquisitiveness like i just have questions and i dig and i'll just put podcasts on bro that's why i love podcasts i could be on a job site building something i will drive my I will drive my workers crazy because they'll be wanting to listen to old school music and I'll be listening to news or I'll be listening to NPR. I love NPR. NPR is the shit. Turn on NPR from six in the morning to 12 noon. That's where they really talk in news. At 12 is when they start talking about local shit. You know, oh, Baltimore apples are being ripe in Baltimore City and all that shit. But if you're in the lifts in the morning, that's when they're talking about local and local politics, local news, you know what I'm saying, and national news. Let's move on, bro. That's important. I'm, that's I'm about the one. I'm impressed. I'm not gonna lie to you. That's impressive. You might think it's boring, but I'm like, man, shit. No, it's not boring to me. But I know people at home are going, yo, talk about some rap or something. Like, <laughs> you'd be surprised, bro. People really be wanting to learn, bro. Like all that entertainment yeah. shit, like that's that red pill, blue pill shit. Like it'd be cool, but like that's why people uh content or platforms don't go nowhere because they not really. They're not de delivering real value. Like it's easy to get up here and talk about the shit that's trending. That's cool. It'll get you some eyes, but how long them eyes stay on you, right? They, they right. come and go. It just is what it is. Mm -hmm. When you can really like feed your audience something that they're learning from, that's when they really stay. Just from my opinion. So I'm not. I, I mean, it might be boring. It might not. It might not be what we usually talk about. But I, I, I I'm interested. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, and I would like to say this too, like, and then, and you know, and then we can take it wherever you want to take it. Like to me, there's it's fascinating how white people do what the fuck they do and why they do it that shit is fast like they are the most crafty motherfuckers they find all type of wild ass ways to control shit to like take money from people like to rob to steal and then like get people emotionally connected like i'm telling you man like it is crazy the more you watch especially like when you start looking at history mm. versus looking at now oh my god yo and you'll see that the game is the game no matter what time period we talk about, like whether it's 2000 years ago or today, they use the same fucking tricks to get what the fuck they want. They just update the formula a little bit, depending upon the technology and the time. Yeah. It's crazy, brother. And the more you get involved, the more you start recognizing. And this is the thing. A lot of people will start getting educated and there's, they, you're going to respond one of two ways. Either you want to go anti-system or you going, shit, I'm going to take advantage of this shit so that I can eat. That's so, what I'm thinking. Like I'm saying, yeah. you learn, you even 
I might be fucked up, but I'm thinking like you learn how they they working in the politics and on a nice. high level. Shit, I can work that shit down yeah. here on the low level when I'm doing my my business with my partners. <laughs> like if, if yeah, that guy's working, shit. But that's the reason why they say you should get involved with politics on a local level. Mm -hmm. Let's just say, for instance, in your neighborhood, you wanted to, I don't know, like say if you want, and I'll tell you a prime example, my father's best friend, they didn't have a supermarket in the area that he lived in. There was not a supermarket for a 10 mile radius. So what he did is he went to his local Cong not congressman, but his local councilman said, yo, we need to build a supermarket. Da -da -da -da. He got he got himself. They created a job for him that the government paid him to develop a supermarket and to, to create like a strip mall. Mm. And he got paid to do that shit. So then I think he also negotiated that when the supermarket be created, parts of money that was made from that supermarket and from the strip mall to be donated to the community so that the community could do other community projects like simple shit like that when you just get involved so now they've got an office he got his own little office his space that's getting paid for by the government he ain't got to pay for it so that they could do community shit and they can they develop like a little neighborhood uh playground and now they got money to do stuff like fix their own streets so now instead of you having to go to the mayor to beg you beg them niggas for money they have a fund in place so if a pothole comes up or something else comes up they fucking use the money to get shit fixed like i hope y'all listen is the way this is free game right here this is free game yeah and then no, like say this is yeah facts facts <laughs> this is game right here this is game this is game when jay get to develop in his studio bro you're gonna need politicians in your pocket to develop you know, to break ground, to build what you got to build. You got to have those relationships. Shit, if you get canceled, you want to be able to make a phone call and have somebody stand with you. You know what I'm saying? So, like, and these politicians be needing people to just be there. Like, show the support, nigga. Mm. Wave a flag for a minute. Hold a sign. Come to an event. Come to a meeting. And when you somebody like Nick and Jay Hill, your presence means more because you have influence. Mm. So, by you lending your influence to building their influence, it helps later on to when y'all need to get shit done. Yo, Jay Hill might want to do a parade from, you know, this place to this place. Guess who you got to talk to? You got to talk to a councilman or a congressman or a mayor. So help a nigga get put into an office. Guess what? It's an open door policy for you when you want to come and do shit. That's how the game work. You rub my back, I rub your back. You know what hey. I'm saying? Pause, yeah. <laughs> definitely. That was definitely plausible. My bad. My bad. We get to rubbing each other back too much. How bad you want that studio bill, Jay? Not that bad. <laughs> Bro, pull up the uh, what, what else we got on the docket, dog? 